nobody's here to hear like chain smoker music and I think we played it It also sucked yeah (laughs) yeah I find it intriguing to know that you're often described as DJs because I don't think of you as DJs. I think of you as musicians. 100%. I feel like there's often like a, uh, I don't know, like a level of confusion between, it doesn't matter your age or whatever. You know what I mean? I think people definitely have like assumptions about what a DJ is. And, you know, we obviously perform shows as, as DJs too, which is awesome and super fun. But I think, you know, somewhere along the way, I think there is like some translation lost about the fact that, you know, obviously producer, songwriter, singer, um, he can play, you know, I can only play piano, but he can play, what, how many, four instruments pretty well? Pretty well is a stretch. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when you got together, did you know that he had all these talents, Alex? No, I mean, I just thought he was good looking um, and <laughs> thought we would just go from there. But uh, no, it was, I mean, it was actually, I mean, if you're going back to, you know, the 10-year mark of what it was, I was like a receptionist at an art gallery and he was graduating school at uh, Syracuse and had just finished an internship, I think, at Interscope. And I was like DJing by night at all these local clubs around New York, some better than others, some really, really bad. And, uh, and you know, I but think- you're a numbers guy. Yeah, we were a numbers guy. Not a face guy. Yeah, exactly. It was quantity over quantity, quality. <laughs> uh, and uh, and what was interesting was just like, I, I mean, I, we were both obsessed. We didn't know each other at this time, but I was, you know, easily just as obsessed as he probably was with dance music. And I think for me, uh, you know, I just felt like I was becoming disenchanted with like the art world that I thought I was going to work in and just found I was just constantly being drawn back to music. And like, while at the time I wasn't producing at all, I was just like you described earlier, like just a DJ, I think that, you know, I wanted more to be more a bigger part of it, you know, and, and, and ideally like find a way to create what, you know, a chain smoker sound. And obviously I, you know, uh, luckily at the time, that's when we were introduced, I was introduced to Drew by a mutual friend. And that was kind of the trade off. Like initially, like any good business partnership, it was like, great, you can make music, but you have no shows. I can't make music, but I have tons of shows. So let's, get together and we'll teach each other you know DJing is a lot easier to learn than producing <laughs> so I think it took Drew about 20 minutes to yeah, figure yeah, it he out he taught me how to <laughs> DJ on CDJs I literally 45 minutes before our first show yeah. and he did it, great <laughs> and, and, and it was at Terminal 5 in New York City which was <laughs> and it, we, it wasn't our we played for, we opened for Time Flies who were still good friends of ours for like 3,000 people. Yeah. And there's been a funny thing in our career. Every time something awesome happened, it's immediately followed by something super humbling. And devastating. So, yeah, yeah. Or, or <laughs> devastating. And so we played for our first show. For 3,000 people, we had like a 45-minute set, if that. Kids were going nuts. I was like, yes, I knew D- DJing was going to be awesome. So, so glad with my career path. We immediately go to this club, Whip. Which um, I don't you never remember this is like ten years ago. Drake and uh, Chris Brown got in a fight and like like threw bottles at each other. It was all over Rihanna, I guess, or whatever. And it happened like the night before, and so no one was trying to go to that club. So we just like <laughs> then after hot, coming off this high, we're in this club DJing for literally two people. I think I remember texting our manager there. being like, "We're still gonna get paid, right? Because there's literally <laughs> nobody here." And he's like, "You're gonna get paid." I was like, "All right, well, I guess uh, whatever." whatever. <laughs> but. <laughs> This is life. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but what was cool, obviously, for me, specifically, obviously, beyond, like, now having someone that can, you know, help figure out what that chain smoker sound is, I think that actually the fact that, like, I actually had no skill beyond, like, the, you know, uh, what, what do you want to call it, like, my, forming your own opinion and taste about what's good dance you, music and stuff. You've always had very good taste. And But I think, like, the that, best th- that part is what's been interesting is that, like, you kind of come in with, like, no experience. So, like, even for me, like, speaking the language of music to him when he's, like, producing something and being like, can you move that or do this? You know, I didn't have any formal music theory training. So it's, like, funny trying to describe someone, you know, be like a scientist being like, put it in that weird glass, you know, the thing that's like, oh, a beaker. You know what I mean? And it's, like, <laughs> that sort of conversation was a lot of the first couple of years. But I think also the fact that, like, he would get so bogged down in the minutia of every song in detail, which is a good thing. But then, like, you had me kind of, like, to pull him out of it and be, like, thinking maybe on a more macro sense or not letting him get stuck in, you know, 
drum fill world. You know what I mean? And yeah. uh, and I think that's kind of and then eventually we, we don't want to go there. Yeah, don't <laughs> go to drum, world, don't drum fill world. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but it was like you know it was a fun part. It was it was really fun in the beginning, kind of like working all day every day in each other's sh- really shitty apartments in New York, and you know. I remember, you know, he had like roommates that would like appear in the middle of the afternoon after like a night of raging. We'd be like, oh, you guys are here and we'd just be working on a remix um, or something. And, you know, those were like really fun days as like scary as it was also because you just had no idea. But I think for us, we always just measured our success in little small steps of progress. Um, And that I think like led us, you know, to you kind of before you know it, you're somewhere completely different. We didn't kind of get wrapped up in being like, let's write the biggest hit in the world. We were like, this remix hustle's fun. Like we're building up fans and people are starting to listen to our music. And I think I remember playing like, for the most part, for the first few years, would go play club shows and not play any of our music because we were like, nobody's here to hear like chain smoker music and I think we played it a night. also sucked yeah yeah <laughs> but I think I remember playing a night at marquee and afterwards some person approached us and was like I'm so upset like bummed out and we're like why the show was sick and they were like you didn't play any of your music and we're like you want to hear our music and they were like yeah that's why we came and I'm like are other people here that want to hear it and they're like yeah you know what I mean and I think like then we began to realize that like oh we can actually start you know, promote playing our music and doing it in a clever way. And we've always been really smart about how we like, you know, that's, I think being a DJ teaches you those kind of things about like how you introduce a song that no one's heard before. I mean, Vegas has, teaches you that really fast because, you know, you have to read a room and it's not just like about jamming down, you know, a musical journey in people's throats. You got to like lure them in with a song they know and then switch it to something they don't, but you know, before they even realize it. And then, you're back out of it to something that has like super high energy so you kind of don't lose momentum but yeah that was kind of it was it was a fun process getting to you know get started and i, I can't imagine what our friends like thought they're like so you're just hanging out with this guy all the time you know what I mean? and it's like, it's like yeah it's going really well it's like we're, we didn't have time for anybody else like we were so focused you know back then yeah. still are 